Hello, wonderful family. Another glorious day and another beautiful opportunity to share the word with you. Today's recording is going to be a quick one. And it has to do with... Um, sorry about that. It has to do with um, the story of the prodigal son. We're going back there to, to glean a bit from a pertinent lesson there. Do you realize that the prodigal son, um, when the Bible says he came to his senses, he said that he will return to his father's house. But when returning to his father's house, he, he was coming with a sense of uh, a sin consciousness um, mentality. He was saying he's going to return and he's going to ask that he be put in a lower estate than even the servants in his house. That was because he had a low sense of worth before his father. He was putting his sin before himself. Now, as a baby, the father um, interrupted that thought and put paid to it by instructing the servants to go and... Um, those same servants that he, he was trying to belittle himself before. He was, his father gave instructions to for them to elevate him in the eyes of those servants and everyone to a status of the beloved. He sent for the fattened calf to be slaughtered. Sent those servants to put a cloak, a robe around him and a ring on his feet, on his finger. The, the robe saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, basically. Praise God. Now, this mentality was rife in that family. Only God knows why. Because this, the elder brother had that, that kind of similar mentality that he would, it is his works that should earn him a position. Now, I said all that to say this. Well, anyway, the father dispelled that uh, mentality and said it's not based on your works, but it's based on your relationship. In essence, what was the father saying? The father was saying that as far as you have a relationship with me, you have right standing with me, you can take anything you want. Basically, it's a righteousness consciousness. Both sons didn't have righteousness consciousness. The first son had sin consciousness. In fact, both had sin, sin consciousness. It is, I will not, the, the elder brother was, I will not mess up and then I will work. And when I work, I deserve this. The son said, I have messed up and that mess up is right in my front. It hinders me from gaining access to things. But the father stepped in the gap for between both of them to establish that you are in right standing with me as by the fact that you are my son. And because you are in right standing with me and you are my son, you take. It is your right. So a state of righteousness, uh, righteousness conscious, that you are in right standing with me guarantees you access to all that is mine. All that is mine is yours. The Father is saying that to you too. Forget this sense that I once was a sinner and rather put on the, the cloak of the free gift of righteousness that says that Jesus paid it all for you and there's no beef between you and the Father. That means that you are in right standing with the Father and all that he has is thine so you can take it anytime you need it. What, does, what, what belongs to the Father in the kingdom? He says all that is his is dying as long as you look at the blood of jesus that it avails much and it was shed for you and it purged you of all sin and that there's no remembrance of sin of yours before the father with the father you can step in there and you can get based on his promises don't let the enemy cheat you don't let him cheat you don't fall into either category of the of the prodigal son that left home and the prodigal or the prodigal son that stayed at home. Instead, know your rights in Christ. The Father is not angry with you as a believer. 
He loves you. If you miss it, immediately apologize to him because you have an advocate. The, the man, Jesus Christ, a mediator, your high priest. Confess that sin. Get it out of the way. Relationship is, is key. God bless you. Hallelujah.